In honor of Star Wars The Phantom Menace celebrating its 25th anniversary this year, I wanted to go back and kind of talk about uh, Star Wars as a whole and rank the franchise from what I feel is the worst film in the franchise to what I feel is the my favorite film or the best film in my my personal opinion. I wanted to kind of share uh, that with everyone here and have you guys do so as well. In the comments section, of course, we're not going to agree on this list, and I think Star Wars has been kind of a kind of a very hot topic conversation a lot of people kind of get up in arms with how movies are placed into the ranking and i i know my list is going to probably trigger some people out there because it's not the right list by any means your guys's list uh, is just as important as mine so feel free to share that down in the comments section uh, i also want to clarify too on, on this ranking i'm doing the movies that have hit theaters i'm not going to talk about the tv shows here so unfortunately mandalorian the acolyte obi-wan and ahsoka won't be in the clone wars won't be featured in this franchise ranking i'm only talking about the live action move or the movies that have hit theaters there's one non-live action movie that we will talk about on this ranking here as well Number 12 on my list, I do have Star Wars The Clone Wars, which is the uh, kind of the kickoff of the animated TV show. It is a part episode to the show crammed into a full-length movie, which came out in 2008 at about 98 minutes long. It was directed by Dave Filoni, who is now kind of the head of kind of one of the heads of Star Wars IP at Disney. He does really great stuff. However, I really never got into the animated Clone Wars show, which is like a big kind of like, what are you talking about? This Star Wars Clone Wars movie, you haven't even seen the show. But the film at itself, it, there's some interesting things. I really like Ahsoka here and seeing how she just got brought in here. Uh, I, I, something that I've always been meaning to go back and watch the Clone Wars animated show, but never just I never actually did it. So I probably big blind spot on my on my thing here but uh, definitely go see i need to go back and revisit the clone wars here number 11 on my list i do have attack of the clones episode 2 which came out in 2002 here and this film has some really cool things going forward i love the big final 30 minutes of the film really awesome to see all the jedi out in full force, especially like seeing Samuel L. Jackson's Base Windu go taking on Jango Fett here. Uh, awesome to see another like bounty hunter, and we're seeing the likeness of young Boba Fett here. I kind of I uh, wished he would probably have popped up in episode three, but that's a, maybe a missed opportunity there. Uh, but seeing uh, Jango Fett was really cool, but seeing a lot of these, the starting up the clone army and seeing the kind of the spark of what has would become the clone wars uh seeing another new villain and darth tyrannus and seeing the other political undertones it plays a little better than phantom menace when it, dealing in kind of the political and kind of the intrigue and kind of the uh, diving into these storylines however what really loses me in this movie is the big kind of fake love the love story between anakin and uh, padme here uh, i feel like part of that it's not on the actors, but unfortunately it is on the writing here. And um, seeing how some of the lines and dialogue there, it just it's very drawn out. It's almost, it's an hour and 42 minutes, and it feels really slow and dragged out. And I, it's one of those ones that I, I don't go back and rewatch the entire movie all the time, but I do like to go back and watch kind of the endings. That, that's some really cool, intriguing stuff there. And this is where he really, foc George Lucas focuses on a lot of special effects. And some of that stuff doesn't really hold up to me in my opinion so all right number 10 on my list uh, is star wars episode 9 the rise of skywalker which again comes in at 142 minutes it is a film that unfortunately did a lot of backpedaling from the people's immediate reaction to the last jedi uh, had a different director had different stories of course disney kind of pumped the brakes a little bit on the story that the last jedi did told with ryan johnson here and they went with jj abrams again and one of a safer choice kind of like we'll talk about another film on this franchise here uh, but the rise of skywalker while there is some interesting things again i think every these all these movies do have interesting things and elements of the, the, in their stories this one just kind of misses the mark and it kind of backpedals on a lot of different things and while it still can be entertaining i feel like it, it's a little too late for Star Wars fans. And this is where we really felt like Disney was doing the f movies a disservice 
especially the fans of the, the franchise. And I think now with the recently reviewed like Acolyte that came out and that I haven't watched that show, but I know that that got kind of panned as well by the viewers, not maybe critics, but I know that we're getting maybe a little Star Wars fatigued by Disney. So hopefully we don't see any more TV shows get pumped out. We see more, they focus on some good IPs or good stories for films because I feel like they're, they're very cinematic, but at the same time we need really good fleshed out stories and stay away from the Skywalkers. At number nine on my list, I do have Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Now, I have recently watched this one. I, I do like a lot of the elements here, and I think having Qui Gon Jinn and Darth Maul being some really interesting characters. I feel like again, this movie just gets bogged down in some political stories that definitely feel slower at times. But there's some really cool elements there to like as well. The pod racing sequence is fantastic. The also the final battle between Darth Maul, which it seems choreographed, but it's a very fun epic battle anakin flying in the naboo starfighters up in space as well that is now this is pod racing uh that's some, there's some fun stuff here some bad dialogue does ha- hurt this movie especially with a young actor's career which he never has recovered from again i sp- spoke on this quite a bit in my review i do i uh, think jake lloyd got the short end of the stick in this franchise uh, and natalie portman does seem wooden at times here but when she steps out from the queen attire, she's definitely more entertaining. And it's having young Ewan McGregor uh, repri- uh, show up here as young Obi-Wan uh, is a breath of fresh air for an ideal casting, high war performance there. Phantom Menace, while is definitely slower and uh, not as entertaining as it should have been, it was definitely one of the more hyped movies and one of the more influential movies of my early days. Number eight on my list is Solo, a Star Wars story. Now, if you ask me if we needed this movie... Absolutely not. We don't need a Han Solo Star Wars movie, a solo a solo film of Solo. We don't really need it. Uh, but Alden Ehrenreich as Solo is pretty good casting. I feel like he captures a lot of the smugness of what Harrison Ford was able to bring to the role. Now, Han Solo being one of my personal favorite characters, I think as many of you can attest, you can do like the character a lot as well. I don't think we actually needed this movie by any means i think lando calrissian also being this movie with donald glover i think donald glover is probably the best casted character in this movie one well, of the interesting things at the very end of the movie with the darth maul and kind of the, the intrigue and the possible setup of a future film which we'll probably never get I, I i do think that this movie will go down as one of the more forgettable movies i do like certain elements here even though i think Ron Howard is a safe choice, kind of like what I said about J.J. Abrams coming back for Rise of Skywalker. Ron Howard is equally as safe. It should have been Lord and Miller. Definitely would have been a little more epic, a little more feeling, and probably a little bit more uh, wisecracking than this kind of safeness that Disney is doing. But at the same time, there's some really fun things to have, and it was never boring in any means. It might be forgettable at times, but it's never was never boring to me. And I do like Solo, a Star Wars story, and that's where it's really at the bottom of my list for those specific reasons all right this is where we talk about number seven is rogue one a star wars story i feel like this movie here had so much potential to being so much better and a lot of people really do love this movie however it is really hard for me as an audience member to get invested into a story where i already kind of know the outcome of this movie before i even get to in the theater you obviously knew where the story was this is the people stealing this these resistant fighters stealing the plans to the death star and that's how princess leia gets her hands on them and a new hope or star wars and uh, and that's where this film does kick off it starts off with the kicks off with the beginning of a new hope essentially uh, but rogue one it's very gritty there's some really good cool tactical parts in this movie uh, Gene Erso is a very interesting character. I think Felicity Jones does a really good job. Diego Luna, uh, he, he plays Andor. I know they made a TV show about his character. It was really cool to see K2SO. is one of my more f- uh, favorite parts of the film. I also really like Donnie Yin as Chirrut coming up here. Uh, there's some really good uh, characters in here. Also, you get Mad Mickelson and Ben Mendelsohn comes up here. Riz Ahmed, Forrest Whitaker really talented cast and really just awesome filmmaking by gareth edwards gareth edwards has a very kind of underrated filmmaker in my opinion and uh, he did a really great job with this movie however there are a lot of things where it feels like we're kind of telling this gritty story but we already kind of know how it ends but we're going to tie in a bunch of disney uh, connection stuff that we really didn't 
ask for. And I don't think anybody really asked for this specific story. While it may seem really epic and grand, the thing we really talk about this movie a lot is the Darth Vader sequence at the very end. Darth Vader moved so quickly in that sequence, and he was so brutal, the most brutal Darth Vader we've ever seen uh, on screen in, in cinema. And then we, in New Hope and Empire and Return of the Jedi, he doesn't seem to be as, like, agile as he was in the previous scene. But we, as we know from, you know, Rogue One and New Hope, those movies take place moments after each other. So it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But it's really cool and epic. That's how we, that's why we left the theater really excited for that sequence because it was fantastic. And rightfully so, it's a great sequence. Uh, but as, overall, that's what we're really remembering in the movie. And this is where, too, where... Disney started doing the fake out on the, some of the scenes and trailers. Definitely noticeable with Rogue One here. Number six on my list is Return of the Jedi. Now, this is where the uh, quality of the films definitely step up quite a bit, and it's really tough to nail in which where the next six movies really fit. But Return of the Jedi is going to fall at number six here. Yeah, it's conveniently the sixth film in the, the, the chronological order. Uh, this one is a, a really fun film. I really loved this movie quite a bit growing up. But as I grow up, I, I do find little nits and pieces in the the, the the armor of the what is Return of the Jedi. And while it's still rarely enjoyable and it's a very fun, exciting chapter of the uh, Star Wars universe, and there's a lot of fun moments and it moves really quickly and there's some really darker elements. It doesn't get as quite as dark as I kind of want it to be, unfortunately. Uh, it has a lot of really awesome moments with Jabba the Hutt and then the ending battle on Endor and on Death Star 2 and the big space battle outside of that as well. It's a trap. It's, 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 a, it's a very entertaining uh, film that does play it. Uh, pretty close to the numbers, pretty, you know, nothing crazy, no no big reveals or anything really happens other than, like, the Leia's your sister, which we kind of already knew that going into it. Uh, but at the same time, it's a very entertaining movie, but nothing cr- super crazy. Uh, but I, I think I'm just going to put it at number six. Number five on my list, this is a movie where, like, five and six could flop. I just will preface that. I have episode three, Revenge of the Sith. Now, this movie, going into the theater, I honestly thought this was going to be the last Star Wars I would ever see back in 2005. I remember sitting there with my sister in the theater thinking this was going to be the last Star Wars movie. And it was it was really awesome to see this executed. Every new, every prequel movie had a, a more interesting character, and General Grievous being that character, everybody thought was going to be this badass character, and he was. I didn't see a whole lot of him in the movie, but this is really where we see like the Order sixty six. That Order sixty six scene was awesome, and seeing where Anakin became truly uh, Darth Vader. And while some of that lines become cheesy, that's kind of the the nostalgia of the prequels trilogy. There's a lot of cheesy bad lines and especially deliveries from our actors, but it's not the actors' fault. I don't. I will attest to that. It's kind of the writing here. But we do see a lot of really awesome moments that play out are very important and it's hard to not like this movie this is definitely by far the best film in that prequel trilogy and i'm you know i'm really excited that i'm putting it this high because i had it actually lower but this was a damn good movie top four now i have at number four star wars the force awakens it's hard to be it's hard not to be so excited about this movie i did speak of everybody's anticipation for phantom menace growing up but when episode seven actually dropped and we see the excitement from you know, with the Disney acquisitions, like we're going to get a new Star Wars and seeing episode seven, the Force Awakens trailer immediately skyrocket to one of the most anticipated movies of all time. Force Awakens might be just a retreading of a, a new hope, but at the same time, it worked. We saw some nostalgia there with Han Solo and Chewbacca and uh, Princess uh, General Leia at this point and seeing some, and some new characters that we didn't even know we, we actually kind of liked. Uh, Rey being a very intriguing one here, uh, Finn and Oscar Isaac's character of Poe Dameron and Adam Driver absolutely knocking it out of the park with being the best part of the sequel trilogy as Kylo Ren. I absolutely love that. And then seeing the intrigue with Supreme uh, Leader Snoke and seeing what what character where that character would eventually lead to, uh, but not having um, Luke Skywalker there was kind of a mystery. But it, it, it was definitely a crowd pleasing movie, and it was such a an awesome experience to witness that on the biggest screen possible. All right, number three. I can't honestly believe I'm actually doing this, but I'm putting The Last Jedi as the third best Star Wars movie. Now, if you asked me like a couple years ago, this absolutely would not be even close to being the top movie in the franchise. But I've kind of turned on Star Wars a little bit too. I did not like The Last Jedi. I went to see it with a ton of coworkers. 
yeah, there's about we had the entire theater basically to ourselves, and I was like one of two people that absolutely hated this movie. I sat next to one of my best friends, and I just looked at him and was like, I kind of hated this movie, and he's like, I absolutely loved this movie, but he's absolutely right, and I, I've watched this a lot more. A lot of decisions this movie does make that I didn't agree with off the top of my head, rewatching it. I kind of respect it, and I, I respect the fact that this movie uh, is the way it is, and I totally do not respect the fact that Disney kind of did a course correction with The Rise of Skywalker. The Rise of Skywalker was such a disrespect to the fans of this movie that it made me not even like The Rise of Skywalker. It made me like this movie even more, and I went back and watched it, and I was like, I actually kind of dig this movie. Uh, this is one of the first films that when I first watched it, I was like, I can't review this movie right away. That's when, especially a couple of years ago when I was doing YouTube a lot uh, and differently than I, we are doing it now. Uh, so I had to go back and watch it twice before I even put out a review out because I knew I was going to be criticized on how I was going to talk about it. Uh, but at the same time is that if you talk about when this movie came out, if you liked it or loved it, or loved it or or loved it or hated it you were both wrong like that's there was no middle ground on anybody's thoughts on it basically this is where the fandom really kind of turned on the franchise and the fans as well uh, but for me i don't care i, I really like the last jedi a lot now and i th think the darkness of it plays just perfectly for me i like the darker tones of it and re-watching it while i don't like a lot of the choices and some of the stuff on it it's hard to argue why this would be a bad movie than more of the, a, one of the best movies in the franchise so I will, I will stand on this the sword that The Last Jedi is the third best Star Wars movie. Because the second best Star Wars movie is A New Hope, uh, or Star Wars. I absolutely loved watching this movie when I was uh, five years old. I watched this on VHS, and I started reenacting the characters. And I grew up on the, the original trilogy quite a bit. And A New Hope, while it's a slower burn, there's so many iconic moments there, iconic characters that I grew up. And it's hard not to put this as one of the, one of the better movies in the franchise. I, I, I understand why newer and younger audiences may not like this movie as much, but growing up the time frame I grew up in, it's it's very nostalgic to me. It's one of those films that I, I, I can go back and watch any time and kind of remember a lot of the, the dialogue and recite it and just find really enjoyment in it. And it reminds me of a younger, peaceful time where I'm not an adult. I just was be carefree and living in this adventure world and following these characters and growing up with them. So definitely a nostalgic pick but star wars a new hope uh rightfully just be needs to be number two here because number one is going to be episode five the empire strikes back now again this film has changed on me too this was one of my least favorite movies growing up when i was five but has grown to be one of my favorite movies of all time it's i think it's in my top five uh movies of all time and rightfully so too I, I like i said i like those darker tones i liked the the intrigue the way this movie was put together the different darker elements the kind of the the intrigue with the relations between darth vader and luke skywalker some of the storytelling elements the the ways things the battles were played out here on the on hoth and uh the training with luke and with yoda here and seeing the, kind of the will they want their tension the sexual tension between han and uh han and leia here and seeing the kind of the, like the darkness and menacingness of um the temptation of Luke uh, from Darth Vader was just is, is everything I want, <laughs> and seeing uh, seeing everything play out with that epic fi uh, final one of the final scenes of the movie this, the movie saying like No, I'm your father, and seeing that epic cry from Luke No, it's 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 all it plays really well, and I absolutely just dig The Empire Strikes Back. It's hard not to love this movie. It's put together so well, and uh, that's my ranking. All right, well, that's my quick ranking from of the franchise from worst to best. Now, my list is not going to be the, the right list, and I'm prepared for your conversations down in the comments section down below. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening to this audio on the podcast, and make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe wherever you guys are listening to it. So until next time, I will see you later.